Hey there, this is one of the new um, LCD cable dummies just for testing the size and the length and how it fits in the py uh, Pyra. And as a few of you guys actually have asked how will this work um, and how did I think about that, um, I will show you or I will try to show you in the video because it will be pretty hard with those small details to keep it in focus, but I hope you can see it good enough. Let's start with a different cable. This is, as you probably know, um, one of the old Pandora LCD cables. One difference here is we got a lot of connections, twice as much about. And as you can see here with the small wires here, it actually has traces on both directions. So no wonder it can easily break. We need a lot of uh, connections here compared to uh, Pyra's LCD cable, which only has half of the connections and only on one side, so not on both sides which means it's, uh, this is also a reason why it shouldn't break that easy. Now, next, if you compare them, most of the time the Pyra cable will be a lot wider as well than the Pandora cable. Um, so we've got more space and uh, can put more traces there. If you look closely here, um, all the traces are doubled in the white area. Two traces are all connected and they go single traces only for that short part here. So where the cable was rolled, we always have a double connection with uh, redundant connections, which means that if one cable or if one trace breaks, the cable will still work, which is great. And they are always connected uh, after one centimeter about that. So if anything, if the cable breaks here and the trace breaks here, that's still no problem as long as both uh, traces don't break. So that's the first thing we did, but there's another problem. Back to Bednora's cable. Um, you know that usually these are rolled through the hinge, so um, for example the Pandora cable is rolled approximately like that. Which means there's a lot of stress here on the traces. You know here the traces go along and you roll them and the traces are rolled which puts a lot of stress. And if you open and close it a lot of times, if you wiggle it around a lot of times, the cables will eventually break. That's a problem with all cables that are being rolled. Uh, the GPDXD has some failing cables. The Pandora, of course, as most of you know, had a failing cable after a while. So this happens with any system. There's really nothing you can do about it, except for example, make uh, take measurements like double traces as we did on the Pyra. This cable design still uh, also had the same issue with the Pyra. It was being rolled and I think it was three or four rolls even, so that it fit through the hinge here and connects there. So, how did I solve that? I had a different idea and this is with this cable. In this cable, the traces, they will go down, they will go right here and they will go down here. In the white areas, as usual, uh, as on the old cable, they are still doubled, so redundant, and only that small part here at the end will have single traces. So, how does this work? We don't roll the cable like we did the others. Instead, this cable is being rolled like that. So, you see the difference. The trace actually runs parallel to the roll. So the traces don't really, don't have that much um, force put on them because they roll in parallel to the hinge. It's also pretty easy to put that cable in. I will show you that. And um, there's only two areas where there's a bit of um, a force being applied to the cable. That is this area and this, as these are the only two rolls. But that is no big, uh, a big problem or shouldn't be a big problem. As before, we had a lot more um, rolls and this put a lot of more force on the traces. So let's see how this is being assembled. One information up front, um, even though the cable or both cables are made of the same material, this one, as you can see, is a lot more stiff. It stays in any position where I put it. This is simply because um, they actually put a full copper in here. So this is fully made of copper instead of single traces which means it's a lot stiffer. Don't worry, assembly will look a bit weird right now um, because of the stiff material, but this was just a test for the uh, dimensions, so that shouldn't be worrying. Time to start rolling the cable. 
So let's just do it like this. So as you can see here, this is this is where the traces will run, so they're in parallel. Next we got the case and the cable. The case has a small slit here. I'm not sure if you can see it, but as soon as we move the cable through here, you can see that there's a small slit. And that's it. Here we go. And traces are going here in parallel then. Then of course we take the second. There's also a small slit here, so simply move that cable in here. Move it fully through and that's it. Fully assembled. Let's close it down. Now you can see the cables coming here. Um, let's put the PCB in there. Yeah, I know usually KeyMed would come here and so on, but we are just talking about the cable right now. So here you go. And all you need to do is plug it in here. I tried to do that while staying in focus. Which is not easy because I can't look at the picture right now. Okay, so that's closed. Same on the other side. Take the display board, plug it in, close it. Well, and that's it. Here's your cable. In there, there's nearly no force. Uh, it's just not properly assembled here. This, as mentioned, this was just for a demonstration, so you know how the cable, how the traces will work in parallel here. So basically, that's it from here. Hope you enjoyed the small video about the new type of LCD cable that I made, and well, that shouldn't fail. Let's hope it doesn't. Time will tell, but I'm pretty sure it will be very, very sturdy this time as there's not much force on the rolls here. See you next time!